Number one, the light produced by a red neon sign is due to the emission of light by excited neon atoms. Qualitatively, describe the spectrum produced by passing light from a neon lamp through a prison. Okay, so today, uh, well, not today, but this question, we're just going to be discussing how, uh, you know, the neon light is producing a red color. Now, over here, I have a spectra, a light spectra, of many different elements, right? I have sodium here, hydrogen, calcium, and mercury. And all elements will have their own specific light spectra. So we just have to talk about what neon would look like qualitatively. Now qualitatively means no math. So you're just describing what's going on. So for each element, it seems like they're all producing individual lines, right? Quote unquote lines. If you could see me, I'm doing air quotes right now. But for each one of them, I mean, hydrogen has a blue line here. Calcium has many, many, many different lines, right? And they're all different colors. These lines represent wavelengths. So every element will have or will be producing many different wavelengths. So a neon element, so the element neon will also probably be producing multiple, producing multiple wavelengths as well, all right? Now, what is a wavelength? It's from a tip to tip of a sinusoidal curve, or you could say bottom to bottom. So if I'm talking about tip to tip, you know what sinusoidal is, right? Kind of looks like this, right? So a wavelength would be from the tip of one wave to a tip of the other wave. A wavelength is always a length of tip to tip. So this would be a wavelength. And that's what these are representing. These are representing, these lines are representing the different wavelengths, which represent different colors. The higher the wavelength is, the more spread out the wave is. So if you have a larger number, 7,000, that means that your waves are going to be much more farther apart. Because from tip to tip, it has to be a greater distance. As opposed to lower numbers, 4,000 versus 7,000, the tip to tip should be much smaller. So these wavelengths would be much shorter and the waves would be very much more closer together. So they would kind of be like that, right? Tip to tip. You see the difference there? So for a neon element, it will be producing multiple wavelengths. But now we just have to figure out which one would be the predominant one. Well, look at sodium, right? What do you think, what color would you see if you looked at sodium? The predominant color would be the one that's the biggest line. And look at this line right here. You see how it's much bigger in size than all the other ones? So predominantly, sodium would be yellow. Now here, they're saying that the neon sign was red. So what color do you think the neon, the brightest wavelength is? Red. So it would be somewhere in this region. So if we did do neon, the line would be much thicker, signifying that that's the color that you would probably see. So that's another thing that we just have to say. So for a neon, for the neon lamp, it would be producing multiple wavelengths and the wavelength, I'm just going to put WL, and the wavelength in the red region is the brightest, or the greatest, or the thickest. However you guys understand that. But that's all this question was asking. Qualitatively, we just had to describe it. Describe how the spectrum would look. Well, there would be multiple wavelengths, and the red one would be the thickest because it's a red sign. That's the end for this one. Pretty straightforward. Guys, welcome to Chapter 3. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you want, click the subscribe button. You'll get tons of new questions on your feed as to when we post next. It's been awesome so far. Let's start this Chapter 3 journey. See you in the next question. Bye-bye.